I spoke with a lot of customers last year about how even though they're going cloud native for their devices, they still need to rely on traditional VPNs to access their on-prem stuff. Many apps, file shares, and resources just need to stay on-prem, either in traditional data centers or in fully secured private portions of the public cloud. Last year, we also saw the public preview and eventual release of Microsoft's Global Secure Access solution, which offers an identity-driven approach to securing access to applications, file shares, and resources, regardless of location, the device, or user identity. It's made up of Microsoft Entra Internet Access, Microsoft Entra Internet Access for Microsoft Traffic, which is a bit of a mouthful, and also Microsoft Entra Private Access. So with those three traffic forwarding profiles that we have access to, I want to look at Microsoft Entra Private Access. Microsoft Entra Private Access is a little different to the others. This profile is designed to allow authorized users to connect to on-prem resources or private cloud resources without the need for a VPN. It can be configured in two ways. We can either use quick access, which is just a group of fully qualified domain names or IP addresses that we want to secure, or global secure access apps, which allows you to specify a subset of private resources that you want to secure on a per app basis. Global secure access apps, therefore, are much more granular than traditional VPNs, and also much more granular than the quick access. By contrast, configuring quick access provides a quick and easy way to replace a traditional VPN. This allows you to secure access to internal resources with just a few clicks. Let's look at these two diagrams from Microsoft Learn. Firstly, the quick access app approach. Notice this approach requires only one enterprise app and it grants access to the entire internal network across protocols such as HTTP, RDP, and SMB. Now, contrast that with the Global Secure Access app approach. You'll see that in this example of just two apps, it's already a little more complicated. Each segment in the on-premises network requires a corresponding Global Secure Access enterprise app. All right, enough talk. Let's just configure it. So I'm here in the Entra Admin Center and the first thing I want to do is show you the licensing. And I think it's quite important that we look at this because if I go down to identity and down to billing and licenses, one of the things we know from the past few months is that they've changed how we can acquire licenses. We can't use the Entra Admin Center, we have to use the Microsoft Admin Center in order to get access to licensing. But it still shows us licensing, right? So if I choose all products, I would have thought I should be able to see the license that I've purchased or started a trial for this uh, Global Secure Access solution. I expected it to be here. I, in a few seconds ago, I clicked there, having already said this is where you'll be able to see it, and it, it's not there. So I had to cut that and re-record this bit because it's not there. So now we're going to go and find it. I'm going to go to admin.microsoft.com and hope it's there. Uh, in billing maybe your products hey so there's the Entra suite trial so it looks like the trials don't appear in that section there so anyway I have the Entra suite trial the Entra suite contains global secure access uh, internet access and global secure access private access and that's what I'm testing really at the moment so I've gone for the Entra suite it also means that when I've had a go at both of those, I can then pick the one I want to try even further and get a dedicated trial of that because you can still get a separate trial of that. Anyway, so I'm using the Entra Suite trial. So back over to the Entra Admin Center, I'll close down Identity and we're going to head to the bottom here of Global Secure Access. And there's not a lot on the dashboard yet because I haven't really configured much. I have configured a couple of things just to get us a little bit started, but not a lot. So if I head down to uh, connect and then traffic forwarding, these are the three traffic profiles that I was talking about. One of them is called private access profile and that's the one I'm going to be configuring today with you. So it's, it's set up, all you do is tick that or slide that slider across to be on and then specify whether you're going to link it to all users or, or a group of users. In my case, I've chosen all users. 
Uh, but that's as far as I got. And then I went over to, uh, on the left hand side here, we've got connectors. And I downloaded this connector service and installed it on one of my application servers in my on-premises data center. So that's been done. I have it installed. I'll, in fact, I can probably show you it. Here it is. So if I go into this machine. Now, one thing that is interesting is that you can't actually, it's not an actual application that gets installed and, and sticks around on the desktop or anything. We can see if we go to programs and features, or oh, it's a server, so um, uninstall a program. We have the private network connector and the private network connector updater. Those are the things that are installed. And there's not anything that says it's running, but it is running because Entra sees that it's there. So I'm going to head back over to Entra. And there it is. So it's an active private network connector. Great. Now it says private network is currently disabled for your tenant. And I've enabled everything to do with it. So the only thing that's left is to enable private network connectors. Let's click that. And it says enabling private network allows you to provide remote access to your on-prem resources. That sounds exactly like I'm like what I'm trying to do. So I'll choose yes. And presumably that will mean that little banner goes away, which is a great start. And I've got this on-premises network here. Fantastic. Now I do have at the top here, configure an app, but I don't want to go into that just yet. In fact, I don't want to do that at all if I'm using quick access. That's the whole point. I'm going to instead choose applications up here and then look at quick access. Let's choose that. And now we get to configure an infra. And now I know the uh, location I'm configuring is actually in my in my garage at home. So I can simply choose a name for that. I'm going to call it HS. And the connector group I'm going to leave as default. And then the only other thing we need to configure is the application segment. I'll choose add quick access application segment. And then we can either specify an IP address or a fully qualified domain name or a, a range of IP addresses. I'm going to choose the CIDR range. I'm going to go with 192.168.25.1 with a net mask of slash 24. And in the ports, we're going to go with uh, what, file shares, SMB, so 445. Um, let's add in... How do you separate these? Let's try a comma. Yeah, that works. So um, obviously 80 and 443 and uh, what else? Let's do RDP 3389. Okay, so all of that will be using the, the TCP protocol. So I'll choose apply. So that currently says pending. Let me just choose save. And it says it's updating the network access settings. Okay, that says successful. It's using 445, 80, 443, and 3389. Probably could have put them in a better order, but that's how I thought of them. I also need to um, deploy the client agent to the laptop that I'm going to use to demonstrate this, but that is currently building. So I, I can't I can't do that just yet. Whilst it's doing that, let's package up the application ready to deploy it via Intune. Sounds like a good use of my time. So let's take a look at client download. It is uh, this one here. So they have versions for iOS and Mac OS and, and Android, but I'm going to show you the uh, laptop, the Windows laptop first. So I'll choose download client and get this downloaded. So it's a global secure access exe. Well, that'd be interesting. Um, hopefully it has a silent method. Otherwise this will be very difficult. Ah, there it is. So we have the slash quiet switch. Um, okay. Well, this should just work then, right? Let's do slash quiet. In that case, we just need to get that into Intune. So we will go to Robopack. And just here, we can use the convert package. I'm going to use this, uh, this executable I've just downloaded here. We have the uh, package figured out to be an executable installer. That's the name of it. That's the size. Choose continue. 
let's uh, replace that with slash quiet and we'll use PSEDT 3.10.2 in the machine context. Wonderful. And good. Let's get that creating. And hopefully by the time the machine is ready to go, we'll have this, this, this package ready to deploy. So as you can see, RoboPack is currently analyzing that executable that I've just uploaded to it. That means that it's spinning up a virtual machine and installing it locally on that machine using the command I gave it. One, to check that the command was right and that it actually works. And two, to make sure there's no viruses within the app. It'll scan that for malware to make sure it's actually a safe application to deploy via RoboPack. So it's then also going to test the uninstallation that it assumes we'll be able to find. It, I didn't tell it how to uninstall it. It's going to try and figure it out for me. It's now testing the uninstallation, and we'll see if that works. I've, you saw what I did. I didn't give it any information about the uninstaller. So if it works, then fantastic. All right, so that's now completed. And we can head down and see the detection rule that it's figured out what we should use. So it has given us the string that it suggests we use, and also the version that we're looking for. Fantastic. So now I just need to import this to Intune and we can deploy it. So I'll choose import to Intune. I'm going to choose my last coffee tenant right here. Choose continue. Uh, is this all right? That looks good to me. So it's wrapped it in deploy application, um, the, the PSEDT. So that's why it says deploy application, deploy mode silent. And same with the uninstaller because it's no longer using the command I gave it. It's going to be putting it into PSEDT for us. Let's check the detection rules. That looks good. And all right, that looks good. Okay, and we're ready to continue and start that import. Okay. So that's pretty much done. We're almost there. We'll head over to Intune now and see that it's actually there for us. So from Intune, we're gonna to go to apps, Windows, and there we have Global Secure Access Client version 2.8.45. Click on that, and yeah, ready to go. Fantastic. So let's deploy that. We'll add in all my Windows devices and choose Review and Save and Save. And that's now heading over to the laptop we've got here and all of my other devices that I've been testing with over the past few weeks. Okay, so while that device is building, let's deploy it to my Mac OS device. So the only requirement that you need for that you need to have already for Mac OS is that we are using Mac OS 13. We have a device registered in Entra using the company portal and also the enterprise SSO plugin. So we need um, the platform SSO in place. And so I have all those things, so it should be just a case of going to download client and grabbing the global secure access client and waiting for it to download. And once it's here, we should be able to just install it. I'm going to install it manually rather than deploying it via Intune because this really is just a test for me right now. So let's just go ahead and choose agree. I'll use the password. Okay, it needs to install a system extension. So all good for me, I'll just choose to install that. Now that's one of the benefits with Intune, you could deploy that uh, centrally using a configuration profile that we'll go into later on. So, okay, that's all good. And all right, done. So that's now installed. We have the global secure access client. So let's see if that is here. Global secure access client here. Okay, it doesn't seem to open up interface. I can see this new icon here though. Let's open the about on that. So that's global secure access. And if I choose setting, that should show us. Okay, that is global secure access. So theoretically it should just now work. Um, I wanna make sure, I wanna just confirm that my actual VPN into that data center 
is turned off because that's the whole point. We're going to turn off that VPN. Right now, I've got an option to connect and not connect. So I'm not connected. This is currently disconnected, so that's not going to be interfering and, and making it look like it's working when it's not. So that's good. And so I guess it's just a case of testing it. Let's give it a go. So uh, RDP, let's try that. So add a PC and it uh, 192.168.25. I'm going to need to remember the IP address for that file server. It is 213. So 213. And we'll add stuff later on for credentials. OK. It knows I need to sign in. That's interesting. Let me sign in. Ah, look at this. Your administrator's configured the application to block users unless they're specifically granted assigned access to the application. I mean, I definitely didn't do that. So that makes sense. Let's move this out of the way a little bit and find how we can solve that. And so we're going to go to the enterprise application and the enterprise application was called that I created was called HS. I, in hindsight, I could have called it something better, but I wasn't aware that I was going to have to go in and do this. I thought the fact that I deployed it to all users, this um, this traffic profile that I showed you earlier on, if I show you where that is, which is in traffic forwarding, and this one here is deployed to all users, I thought that meant that I wouldn't have to go in and deploy the enterprise application or give access to my user to the enterprise application but apparently that ne still needs to be done so I'm going to go into users and groups I'm going to go add user and group and then I will choose my user in this case I'm going to go with Dean and because that's me and choose a sign and then I'll also add in because that's the test user I'm going to be using when I'm not on my Mac. And so there's that done. So theoretically now, the enterprise application is assigned, so I can probably go back in and resume this and just connect to... go to this one. And a prompt for authentication is good, I think. And it looks like it's loading. Slowly, I'll give it that. But that actually is me connecting to the RDP session on my file server without a VPN. All right, and just to show this then, let's um, quickly take a look at Server Manager. And this is my... Let me click local server and actually get to it. This is my AP1 server right here. Let's go back to the uh, dashboard and see what is here. So we have one user on one device connecting to one destination. That sounds about right to me. A little bit of a limited lab environment, I will admit. Let's choose the destination. And it is my uh, lab IP address there. Two transactions, one user, one device. So without my traditional VPN, this open VPN that I have configured to get into the lab to do the configuration that I was showing you, I've been able to connect to my lab file server using global secure access. Now, admittedly, that was using a Mac device. The Windows device still <laughs> hasn't finished building. I need to fix that. I will fix that today. Maybe not today. I'll fix that. But once I have fixed it, we should go back and t take a look at what it looks like from a Windows device accessing things other than RDP, right? Users don't typically RDP into servers, so not a great test, but I really was just checking the connectivity there. I want to show you what it looks like for a user accessing on-premises file shares from a cloud-native device. That's what I'll show you next time, so I'll see you then.